But we're going to start with the group involving Spain, Norway, and Scotland. Mm -hmm. A group that Scotland and Spain looks like they're going to qualify. Norway not 100% out of it yet. They can take the route via the playoffs. But it's a conundrum to me, Robert. Mm -hmm. Uh, after losing last night at home to uh, to Spain, um, the Spain team really didn't have that much to play for. Mm. Now they're literally on the brink of missing out on another major tournament uh, after the World Cup. You know, these World Cups and Euros get bigger and bigger. And weirdly, Norway, despite Erling Holland, despite Martin Udegaard, despite Sanderberg, despite all these stars, they're in danger. Mm. And who better to help us understand this? Then uh, he'll understand it all. Well, Stalin Solbakken. No, Stalin Solbakken <laughs> might be even better. But we'll get the next best thing. We'll get Jan Agafjortov. Jan, obviously, you're a fan. You've been involved with the Norway setup. Somebody looks at this and says, wait a minute, you have such riches. Why? Why the struggles? Why the struggles against, with all due respect, Scotland? I know small, small, smaller nations, it is about generations, it's the luck of the draw. But, you know, Scotland don't have the great generations that they've had in the past right now, and Norway do. Yeah, and it's, it is a good question. And what's quite peculiar that these questions are more put to me from people outside Norway, because in Norway, we tend to have a football discussion. We're so happy that we can put some passes together. Against Spain, we couldn't do that either. We couldn't play out from the back. Spain, we're in all kind of departments better than us. That is point one. Uh, we brought the king in, we brought the prime minister in, we brought the minister of sport in. We could have sold 100,000 tickets and we're ending up playing a bad, bad game. And you, were, Gab, you were talking about it a bit because this is a very unbalanced Norwegian t team. You have Erling Holland and Martin Ødegaard going forward, fantastic. You have midfield players, you, you said Sander Berg. I will also put him put in Ausnes, who's playing for Benfica, he's yes. playing in Champions mm. League. Very, very talented player. We have two young kids in Nutsa, Bob. Nutsa from Bruges and uh, Bob, of course, from, from Manchester City. But what they do have in common is that they are in the Department of Creativity. And Norway, historically, we were always a good nation of defenders. Back in, and I'm not saying everything was better in the past, which is obviously worse, but I'm not saying that. And we had defenders all over the place. We had Ronnie Jonsson, Henning Berg, we had Rune Bratzett at Werder Bremen. We had Ellen Jonsson, who played nine years with Chelsea and couldn't get into the national team. And no, we don't produce defenders anymore, which is quite the big discussion here, I think. I have one theory that we can just put out there. I think that we, in Norway, we use a lot of astroturfs. That sounds, what has that to do with defenders? BS, because when you play on astroturf, everybody wants to be central midfielders. Everybody wants to do a trick. Everybody wants to do the Cruyff turn. Nobody, and we've had this discussion in Norway, in England as well, saying nobody wants to have a target in life to be Gary Neville. But the <laughs> Gary Nevilles of this world, they are the main players in, in, in great teams. So we have to get defenders and we don't have it. Robo, Jan listed all of the attacking mm. uh, riches. You didn't even mention the only living Sorloth in captivity as well. You can chuck him into the mix as, as a goal scorer too. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about Spain and Scotland because obviously mm. Spain, the accusation has been that they've been unbalanced in the past. Um, Scotland, the accusation is everything's negative and depressing, the glory days, where's Doug Leash, blah, blah, blah. But he's found the balance. Okay, can you say some nice things about Scotland? Yes, and, and you're absolutely right. He has found the balance. They've defended well all around the pitch. They've got a game plan that they work to. They've got one or two players that are, are above average, like Robertson and, and players like that. Um, certainly in the front areas, you haven't, they haven't got top quality players, but they play to a system. We saw in the friendly against England that when they're up against the very best nations, they're going to struggle. Although Not they just stand, but England too. Yeah, but they they they, um, they beat Spain, of course, at home, which was one of their best performances for a long, long time. But the manager has got the team playing for him. Uh, the crowd have got behind him. The nation have got behind him, and you can see the confidence builds with when they go on these trips and when they play in these games. So Scotland and Steve Clark have done a good job to get where they are at the moment. <laughs> 